Hello everyone, nice to connect with all of you and to present at the Forum for Open Research uh, in MENA. So my name is Mohammed Mustafa. I am the Regional Engagement Specialist for the Middle East and Asia at DataSide. And today I'm going to talk about the role of persistent identifier in building a trusted and open research infrastructure in the Middle East and North Africa. So yeah, let's start. So who we are, we are a global community that shares a common interest. Our main goal is to ensure that research outputs and resources are openly available and well connected so it can be reused to advance knowledge across different uh, disciplines and for sure now and in the future. So as a community at data site, we make research more effective through metadata that connects research outputs and the resources. And when we talk about research outputs, we mean all research outputs from samples and images to data sets and the preprints. We also enable the creation and management of a persistent identifiers. So we are a DOI registration agency. We also provide integrated services that can improve research workflows and facilitate the discoverability and reuse of research output and, and resources. We are a non-profit organization based in, Ger in Germany and we were founded in the year 2009 by and for the research community. So we believe and we are committed uh, to the principles of open scholarly infrastructure, BOSI principles. So this means that we are community driven uh, organization and sustainable organization as well. We believe in open metadata and open uh, source applications. We help our members uh, to recognize and support a wide range of research output and resources. And we also support our members in building transparency and the trust in the research ecosystem. And we collaborate with uh, different organization across the research ecosystem. This is a snapshot from data site community. So we have more than uh, 2,950 institutional repositories connected with us and using our open infrastructure to register uh, the research output with uh, data site DOIs. We have more than 280 members from 52 countries. And so far, we have issued 55 million DOIs. And overall, the globe, we collaborate with 1,400 research organizations. Regarding our strategic initiatives at data sites, so for sure we take an active part and lead in some cases various initiatives through collaboration with the stakeholders in our community to make open science a reality. So in terms of data metrics, so we are playing an active part and leading the effort for building responsible data metrics through make data count initiative. We also support the building of identifier registry through the research organization registry or ROR. We also contribute uh, at data site to the development of repository discovery initiative, such as the read 3 data project. So this is uh, some examples of our strategic initiative. And in particular, I'm going to highlight data site global access program, one of our strategic initiative that we launched this year later in my presentation. But before doing that, let's have a quick uh, introduction about persistent identifier. So a persistent identifier is a unique alphanumeric string referring usually to a digital resource. It always points to the same resource with a metadata representation about that research output or that resource. So there are different types of bids, as I will explain now. There are bids that can be assigned for research output and resources, like DOIs. There are bids that can be assigned for people like ORCID ID. There are also bids that can be assigned for places like research organizations, for example, and the most famous one is the ROR ID. This is an example for uh, an ORCID record for an academic researcher. So this is an example for an identifier or ORCID identifier that can be assigned for researchers. This is another example for bid, bid for places, universities in that context. And we have an example. So this is the ROR ID of United Arab Emirates University. Digital object identifiers, as I said, so there are a wide range of uh, research output and resources that, that uh, the data site DOIs can support. 
So we have research data sets and collections associated with the workflows. We have the software, we have the images, the samples, the models that have been produced during conducting the research. Also, data side DOIs can support the gray literature uh, materials such as thesis, dissertation, reports, unpublished conference paper, newsletter, preprint uh, 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 journal articles, technical standard, all these research outputs that usually are stored and deposited into an institutional repository. This is an, an example of a data set with using a data side DOI. This is another example for a thesis that has uh, used a digital object identifier as well. And this is an example for a university report that has been deposited into an institutional repository and they are using a DOI for that one as well. This is an example for a software code that has been developed while conducting the research and shared also uh, with the community. This is an example also for national archives and images now. They are using a digital object identifier to refer to these uh, outputs. This is another example for text files stored in an institutional data repository and they are using DOIs for that. So why should we use DOIs for that wide range of research outputs and why should we register them with DOIs? First of all, using digital object identifiers for these DOIs can really increase the visibility and the discoverability. It will also improve the accessibility, the ability to get uh, citations. It will also enhance the reusability for all your research output and resources. And we all know reusability is a very, very important uh, point when we talk about the concept of open science and increasing also the reusability of research. Also, in the context of data sets, using the digital object identifier is really aligned with all the FAIR principles. What we have seen right now also is in uh, some countries it started also to build or develop their national bid strategy. So we have, for example, the Research Data Alliance issued strategies and guidelines, a checklist for countries that are willing to build their national bid strategy. We have a fantastic example for the Australian Research Data Commons, who, by the way, is leading also a data site consortium in Australia. They are building their uh, national bid strategy. And we have JISC in UK also, they are building a UK national bid strategy. The aim is to connect all the research outputs that the country is producing, along with all the ROR IDs affiliated to the organization of a particular country, along also with all the researchers through ORCID IDs that are affiliated to these universities in, in a specific country. All of these items together are connected with the global research ecosystem. This is an example of the different work types that are registered uh, with data site DUIs. This is from our own data site registry. And as we can see, we have almost 15 million data set, 12 million physical object, uh, 4 million images, 1 million preprints. So all this uh, wide range of resources are registered through our 1400 research organization that we collaborate and work with. Now we are going to talk about Data Site Global Access uh, Program, one of our strategic initiative that we started this year at Data Site. The program has been launched in Feb 2023 through uh, a funding that we received from a Chan Zuckerberg initiative. Our aim is to increase the global uh, bid adoption around the globe, and in particular in the underrepresented regions in Africa, Latin America, Middle East, and Asia. So in order to achieve that, we took a comprehensive approach. That approach has three main components. The first one is outreach activities. The second one is technical infrastructure. The third one is funding element. So within the outreach, we start to analyze the needs and education opportunities per region. We also to started to develop uh, regional educational materials in uh, regional languages as well. We are also exploring collaboration opportunities with different organizations. We are setting up an ambassador uh, program to build that network of volunteers around all GAP regions. We're also working on providing case studies and regional examplars. This is some examples from our uh, activities. As you can see, we delivered uh, webinars in different languages, Spanish, Arabic, across also different uh, regions, Asia, Africa, and Latin America.
within our second uh, component of our global access program at the infrastructure, we are working to analyze the existing infrastructure landscape in all gap regions. We are also aiming to collaborate with the repository uh, platform and the service provider with the goal to set up a user groups to exchange knowledge and reuse code in some cases. This is a snapshot from these reports. These reports are going to publish soon with the community or just finalizing them right now and i attach it here a screenshot from the mina region so as we can see we use the standardized data sources like roar open door to track the total number of repositories in the middle east and uh, asia region we are also tracking the service providers infrastructure to have an understanding about which softwares are being used the most so we have for example this space uh, is leading in the MENA region, and then we have ePrints followed by OGS and different uh, softwares as well. So we are trying to have an idea or an understanding about the existing used software. Then the third component of our global access program is funding. So our aim is to enable organizations worldwide, especially in GAP regions, to make the research outputs discoverable. So all non-profit organization in Africa, Asia, Middle East, and Latin America can apply for that. So we are funding three different categories, outreach activities, infrastructure development, and demonstrators. Applications have been closed now because the call for, propo for proposals was launched in 1st of September. We just closed it 15th of October. And I can tell you that so far we have received more than 170 applications from all GAB regions. So this is fantastic. We are currently re reviewing them. And these uh, project will run, the winners will run through the all the course of 2024. And we are also currently working on 2024 Global Access Fund. So we will launch a call for uh, supporters uh, soon as well. So regarding the current adoption of uh, DOIs, data side DOIs in the MENA region, we do have some members in, uh, in the MENA region, like we have the National Research Center uh, in Morocco. We have King Abdullah University of Science and Technology, but the aim is to increase that global adoption in uh, in the Middle East and North Africa region. I would like to invite all of you to join our uh, communities. So we have two options for that. There are direct memberships. So if you have an institutional repository or two institutional repositories and you want to connect them with our infrastructure and register uh, your research output and get DUIs, you can join through a direct member or through a consortium uh, membership. So if you are a group of universities uh, in one country or in one region, if you are a national center and you want to start a DUI consortium in your, in your country and give access to all your your universities to connect their research uh, repository, their institutional repositories with us, you can also uh, join our community. I added the URL here if you want to know more uh, information. Again, thank you so much for this uh, opportunity. And I really, I will really do my best to join the Q&A session to respond to any uh, inquiries if you have. Thank you again.